Hello everyone and welcome to Aquadine. This is developed by... I forgot the name. Soft Color Studios. Uh, by a very nice guy who sent me some postcards in the mail. In exchange for covering this game. I'll be going right. That's fair. They're absolutely beautiful postcards. Um, the game I don't think has an ETA right now. I don't know when it's going to be released. It's being worked on. But you can download the demo right now. And that's what we're going to play today. We're going to play the demo. Let's just start. Long ago, a devastating drought ravaged the land. Their soil was too parched to grow crops, and their livestock dwindled in number. Heat strokes, hunger, and dehydration took the lives of countless villagers. Without the necessary resources for survival, the villagers turned to Levios, the sea deity, and prayed for food and clean water. Levios granted them their wish, but only under one condition, that the merfolk would be allowed to live peacefully among them, and for many decades they did. Over time, however, the merfolk were gradually discriminated against because they were considered abnormal half-humans, inferior beings. Levios became enraged and created an underwater kingdom, now known as Ancient Aquadine to personally lead and protect the merfolk himself, until one day the ancient civilization ceased to exist. Ooh. Over here. And so the people of the land named this town Aquadine as a tribute to the sea deity. This is also one of the many statues sculpted by believers of the merfolk lore. Really? Are we seriously supposed to believe that mermaids existed? It's perfectly understandable that most people share the same skepticism, especially those who aren't from here. Even today, people continue to debate over the validity of lore, despite the lack of reliable evidence. However, it's impossible to ignore that the beliefs of our ancestors shaped much of our culture. As a result, the desire to please Livius drove the town to become one of the best in the world at controlling water pollution. Aquadine even prides itself as a top exporter in both seafood and bottled fresh water. Pardon for the interruption, but I was wondering if you had any suggestions for a nice cup of coffee. Hmm. Actually, we're new one right now. Next to the statue, you'll find the Frenzer Cafe. A family-owned business has been around for over 50 years. They've served some of the best coffee and sweets in town, so I highly recommend you pay a visit. If you like, I can book a reservation for you too. Thank you. I don't need to say that. My pleasure. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. Hey. Is there a marble store around here? Oh? Marbles? My daughter has been collecting marbles since she was a kid. I could never understand why, but she absolutely loves them. Daddy! Oh, there's no need to be ashamed of what you like. Though it is the first time anyone's asked me about marbles. You might have some luck checking the souvenir shops in the mall. I can write you a list when we get back. Isn't that great? Well, let's go there together after the tour. Alright. Thanks, Dad. Must be nice for family to spend time like this. I wish I could do that more often. So speed on your As the gondolier continues to tour the family, his smile more gradually more fades more away. Instead, his voice takes its place. A voice that soon breaks into a bar barcarolle. Gentle rows rhythmically push through the water as calming as the soothing breeze. The white gondola rides casually over the clear waves and glides through a narrow passage. People, enchanted by the song, open their windows and stop to listen as the sound of his voice travels across the canal. It's, it's Seal's voice, isn't it? Seal's singing today. Good for you, Diana. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Anya continues drawing the canal while trying to ignore Diana, who is scrambling frantically, scrambling frantically for her phone. Catch you later, Anna. Without wasting another second, Diana hurries along before she misses her chance. Diana inches her way through a crowd of people who are also attracted to the sound of Seal's voice. She's absolutely determined to get a picture of him. <laughs> I gotta hurry before I miss him. As Diana chases after his voice, she bumps into someone and all of their belongings fall with them. <gasps> My bad, are you okay? Forgive me. I'm fine, are you injured? Sorry about that. Nah, I'm good. Sorry about that. Diana stares at the other girl for a moment, as if she recognizes her from somewhere. Oh! Wait, I know you! You're... 
Farewell. Still stunned, Diana is speechless as she gets a better look at the blonde. It doesn't take long before she cracks a smile. <laughs> I can't believe she's here in Aquadine. Gotta get a picture with her. Oh no, my phone! I just got this darn thing. As Diana picks up her cracked smartphone from the ground, the other girl disappears into the crowd. Man, where'd she go? I just saw her. Well, at least I could still snap a picture with Seal. Wow. Done yet? Sorry about that. You heading home? Maybe. Well... I am, but my mom's gotta, gonna have me help around the cafe again. She's a real slave driver, you know. Sounds troublesome. I know, right? Oh yeah, guess what? Mm -hmm. What? I saw Elizabeth Rose today. I had no idea she'd be here. I can't believe I didn't know about it. Eh, just another human. <gasps> She's a celebrity. What else could you ask for? Actually... An alien? I think they'd be more interesting than some singer. <laughs> You're so weird. Anyway, Elizabeth's pretty easygoing, unlike somebody I know. I'm not gonna name names. I'm fine. Mock me all you like, but aliens are adorable. What do you think? By the way, want to stop by the cafe today? My mom hasn't seen you in forever. No thanks. Just hang out with me for a bit longer, pretty please. <sighs> Whatever. It's not like I got anything better to do anyway. Aquadine's famous cafe has a classic charm, as it is decorated with an array of fresh vines and traditional paintings. Old wine bottles and flowery vases occupy the shelves, among other antiques. Enya and Diana wait near a well-kept jukebox, while a lady in her 40s is serving a customer. What's up? Mom, I'm home! Get moving! Diana, hurry and get that table's order. See what I mean? Hey there. Enya, it's been a while. Well... Yes, it has. Wait. You're buying something, right? Maybe. Probably. Enjoy. Great. Have a seat. Let Diana know if you need anything else, okay? After responding with a mere nod, Anya finds an empty table and quickly makes herself at home, reflecting how well she's known. Dressed in her maid uniform, Diana returns with two cups of coffee and notices Anya occupied with her sketchbook. Oh! That's the one I drew today. Drew you today, d d isn't it? Hey. That reminds me, I have a teeny tiny favor to ask you. Mm -hmm. How teeny tiny? Diana proudly whips out her phone and shows off her picture of Seal. She's like a kid who just pulled the best toy out of a cereal box. What do you think? Could you draw Seal for me? I really want to hang another picture of him in my room. Totally not obsessed with him in any way whatsoever. Wow. You already cracked your phone. Um. Yeah, I haven't been no bumping in the Elizabeth fiasco. You know how it is. What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Your drink is on the house. Anya's eyes roll down at the cup of coffee she just sipped, and she then looks back at Diana, who has the brightest smile on her face. And that explains why she suddenly wanted to treat me for some coffee. How prudent. Actually. I'll just pay for it. It's only like 300 altos anyway. Please, Anya, draw seal for me, pretty please. I'm fine. Not worth my time. <gasps> my act of kindness isn't even worth a gift from a friend. It's not an act of kindness if you expect something in return. I... I thought we were friends. <sighs> okay, fine. Thanks. Well... I know Seal's very popular, but why do you like him? Isn't he just another gondolier? <laughs> Everyone knows that he's the youngest gondolier in town. The gondolier is the guy who pushes the boats in the water, like in... Like in Venice. But he's also really kind and talented. Even a lot of the local girls ride with him. They don't seem very smart. That's just how the family goes. I hear his granddaddy can be strict though, but he doesn't let that bother him when he's with customers. Anya drinks her coffee as she pretends to listen to Diana's constant rambling. Ooh, look at this room. That's an aquarium chalkboard! That is awesome! The following morning begins with a little more noise than usual as a bit of interesting news made its way around the school. Classes haven't started yet, so students are speculating as much as they please. What's up? Hey, did you hear we're going to get a transfer student? Really? Oh, we are? I didn't hear anything about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. They're saying it's somebody outside of Aquadine. Who did you hear from? The teachers. I was passing by the faculty room and sounded kind of excited for some reason. Hmm, I wonder why. Don't know. Maybe she's really smart or something. The morning bell sounds, marking the beginning of the first class. Everyone takes their seats as the teacher steps inside. Hey, folks! 
Morning, class. We got a trans student from Silver who will be joining us today. Now that the rumors are confirmed, people seem surprised that the transfer would be coming to this class. Nearly everyone's attention is directed at the door. Curious to meet the new face. Let me say something. Go on and introduce yourself. A girl with blonde hair stands in front of the class, only to find the stunned reactions on their faces. Greetings. My name is Elizabeth Rose, and it is certainly a pleasure to meet you all. The class cheers with excitement. As they couldn't believe that Elizabeth Rhodes, yes, THE Elizabeth Rhodes, the famous singer from Silver, is joining them as a fellow classmate. Despite Elizabeth already introducing herself, Diana still gazes on with disbelief. Like, she could be mixing her up with someone else. It's just too good to be true. <gasps> is this a dream? Taken back by the coincidence, Elizabeth recognizes Diana and seems equally surprised. The chances of meeting each other again were so slim. She waves back to Diana in a way that is perfectly identical to how she bids her fans farewell to her concert. Without doubt, it is her. <laughs> She's the real deal. Oh my goodness, this is the best day of my life. Incredible. So that's why the teachers are so excited. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, Elizabeth is famous and all, but she's still a classmate. Save all the fanboy, fangirl, fan, whatever business for later. My, my. It appears an introduction is unnecessary. Oh, yeah? Well, in that case, I'll just talk about myself. Always love to do that. Hey! Nobody wants to know you, Mr. Norton. Oh, that's depressing. You see, I wasn't exactly from around here either. Spent many years sailing the seas and carrying out missions on the good old SS Newport. How wonderful! You are a sailor? That's fascinating. And there goes the spotlight. I've been to all sorts of places, but there's something special about this town, I'll tell you that. Have you ever been to Sulphur? You bet! I've been everywhere, Goldie. Pardon? Goldie? Yeah, that's your very own nickname. You like? Well... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but man, with all of us shipmates bunked up together, it can get freaking hot in there. Would've traded anything for some air. Hey. Now that you mentioned it, is that why you never wear a suit like the other teachers? Haha, <laughs> right on the money, Karate Kid. Sure don't want to see me sweat. Maybe if he keeps this up, we'll stall at the clock. Almost forgot. Oh, I got a class to teach. Damn. There's a seat over there, Goldie. With all eyes still on her, Elizabeth strolls down a few rows towards the empty seat by the corner. Open up your history books, folks. It's time to go back in time. <laughs> well, that's kind of lame, Mr. Norton. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering, Shadowbox. Go ahead and start us off on page 64. Hey! What? Who do you think I am? Page 64. I wish I could go back in time. Think before you speak. After a more tense lesson than normal, class finally concludes for the day. However, no one is rushing out the doors like they usually do, which is a rare sight. Hey, folks! That's it for today, folks. Also, could someone show Elizabeth around before the next class? Oh! I'll do it, Mr. Norton. Several other students desperately volunteer as well, but Mr. Norton is looking elsewhere. After scanning the lively room, he spots a bookworm reading alone at his desk. Someone who couldn't care less about helping some new student. He's the perfect target. Romeo, I got a mission for you. What's going on? Earth to Romeo. No. Could you stop calling me that? My name isn't Romeo. You bet. Sure it is. Anyway, show the new go around, would you? <gasps> what? Why four eyes of all people? He barely talks to anyone. The guy kind of looks like me. With Mr. Norton's overwhelming presence before him, Robin twitches. He knows all too well there's no escape once these teachers' mind is made up. Fine. See you around. My hair Forgive isn't me. that long, though. If it's too much of a hassle, I will not require any assistance. Don't worry. Ah, uh, no need to be shy. You two will get along just fine. As Robin reluctantly closes his book, Elizabeth greets him with a smile. That sight alone is enough to make any boy fall head over heels for her, but he doesn't waver. If you don't mind. It appears I have an appointment with you. Whatever. Sounds like it. The two of them begin their school tour, leaving the rest of the class frustrated and disappointed. Hey. What are you trying to pull, Mr. Norton? Now, kids, Romeo hardly talks to anyone, and the girl's new here, so I just want to make sure we all get along. Really? That looked more like a setup. <laughs> I've got no idea what you're talking about. I don't believe it. But I want to interview her and stuff. <laughs> Come on, Diana. We all know you just want to stall through the next class. Well. I've got no idea what you're talking about. With several students watching from the windows, Robin seems more anxious than ever to finish the tour. He's clearly not comfortable with this much attention. Let's just get this over with. Forgive me. Allow me to apologize for interrupting your reading. You appear to be enjoying that book. Whatever. 
It's fine, Mr. Norton is just doing whatever he wants. Can't do much about it. My, my. He certainly is an amusing teacher. I have yet to meet one as charismatic as him. I guess, well, you made a pretty big commotion today. Well... It appears so. I was rather surprised to learn that I am also a well-known Namaquadon. Hmm. What do you do? Pardon? You really do not know who I am? No. Nope. Just some blonde girl transferred in this morning. A blunt choice of words, but as you now know, I am Elizabeth Rhodes, a famous concert singer from Sofer, and a Rhodes Scholar. No, I'm not a Rhodes Scholar. A singer, huh? You plan on performing here, too? You see... I recently moved to Aquadine due to my father's business, so I am uncertain at the moment. Even if that's the reason why you moved, you could still perform here if you wanted. There are several opera houses here. If you don't mind... I have actually taken a break from my career. Let's move on, shall we? Elizabeth walks on ahead, leaving Robin a bit surprised by her reaction. However, his demeanor reverts to the moment she makes a wrong turn. Do you even know where you're going? How embarrassing. Would you be so kind to guide me? That's why I'm here. Ah, they get on. After a brief tour around the school, Robin and Elizabeth enter the cafeteria. Other than the lunch ladies getting things ready, it's pretty much empty. Hang on one second, let me check the menu. See if I can change the, uh... Pass, pass any of the box. I don't think I can. No, that's okay. Maybe we had, Oh, there's an encyclopedia! <gasps> Look at all that! That is cool. We're not gonna read that. You guys can read that on your own when you play the game. I'm not gonna read all that. And finally, here's the cafeteria. My, my. Oh, I am anxious to try out your menu. Do you enjoy sharing meals with your friends? Later. Uh, sure. Anyway, I guess that's that. Without much further ado, Robin starts walking. It's painfully clear he doesn't want to waste another minute of his time. One moment. What does she want now? You see. I wish to thank you for showing me around. To be honest, I was nervous after learning that it would be transferring schools. Really? Nervous? Aren't you an idol or something? You are correct. It does seem ironic for me to say something strange like that. You're weird. Forgive me. You may be right. Forgive me. Do you miss your hometown? Well, I've lived my whole life in Silver. Perhaps I require some time to grow accustomed to these changes. You are too kind. Thank you again for your time. I shall take my leave now. As a matter of fact... Actually, there's one more place I haven't shown you. Oh, where would that be? Just follow me. The roof. A few footsteps echo through the barren stairway before they reach the top floor. With Elizabeth falling behind him, Robin reaches for the door and opens it. With the shield in their eyes from their overwhelming sunlight, they can nearly see the entire ocean from the rooftop. How Ooh. wonderful! You can see so much of the town from up here. Yeah, the sound of the seagulls chirping over the soothing waves, the smell of the ocean as the cool breeze presses against our faces, and a bird's eye view of the town. This is my favorite place. My, my. Really now? I thought you would have said the library. <laughs> A way to judge someone by his looks, but that's not what I meant. The whole town is my favorite place, and that's why I can understand how much you missed your home. For a while, neither of them say a word as they continue to savor the scenery and sounds. Hmm. Well, since you're already here, you may as well learn what the outside world is like. You can even tell your friends about your experiences in Aquadine whenever you visit them. You never know what the future will hold. After getting lost examining the wondrous town from a distance, she looks at Robin, who's smiling for the first time this tour. Forgive me. What was your name again? Robin. Robin Leun. May I call you Mr. Buckworm instead? I believe that nickname suits you quite well. No. Robin will do. You see. You remind me of someone. Someone I met a long time ago. Thank you again for guiding me and sharing this view. I will never forget it. After another long tour, a seal sculls towards the dock and reaches for his rope. He extends his hand to help the passengers off the gondola. Thank you. Thank you for choosing the Cloud Company. Have a good evening. Once they grow their separate ways, seal stretches before grabbing the doorknob. But just as he nearly opens it, he hears a familiar song. This song. It's my song. It's faint, but she has a nice voice. <laughs> Seal, did your voice change? You sound like a little girl. No, Grandfather. Someone else is singing my song, and I kind of want to follow it. His response is met with a brief moment of silence, but soon enough, Seal could hear someone rushing out the door. Oh, yeah? 
What are you doing? Do you not know about the sirens? Why, yes. Grandpa will speak. Grandpa will speak. Long ago. They are beautiful, yet dangerous creatures who lure sailors towards rocks with their song. Then crash, they all drown. Isn't that just a myth? This whole town was built on mythology, my boy. You of all people should know that. I never said I believed in it. Well, you're just a boy. You're too young to die. I'll be back in a bit. Fine. But if you're still alive, go buy some groceries. Same as 30% off today. The sound of her voice leads Seal's gondola through a shore he hardly visits. A few ghost-like jellyfish appear around him, but he doesn't seem surprised. Well, I survived the rocks. So much for the sirens. Grandfather can be really weird sometimes. And these jellyfish. I remember seeing them when I was younger. I tried telling people about them, but no one ever believed me. I used to think they were part of my imagination or something. But Mother can see them too. I always wondered why. How are you? It's been a while since I've seen you guys. How are you? The jellyfish don't respond. I don't know why I expected them to respond. They never do. Of course, they can't talk. However, something did change. The girl singing stopped. Seal turns towards her direction and his eyes widen. He can't believe his eyes. Could it be? A, a siren? Wait, what am I saying? That's a mermaid. A mermaid? Frightened, the mermaid quickly dives underwater and swims away as fast as she could, leaving Seal speechless. Wait, come back! Damn it. I don't believe it. Did I really see a mermaid? Despite its astonishment, Seal quickly wanders around the shore to search for clues. He spends about half an hour looking, but comes up short. Hmm, nothing. The jellyfish linger by as if they're watching over him. He stares back and cracks a smile. <laughs> I suppose you guys wouldn't have anything to say, would you? No, I never do. Seal's gondola makes its way back to the canal, a view that looks even more stunning now than during the day. I know I saw a girl look like a mermaid, but was she real? It was so dark, so maybe I was seeing things. Hey. Hey, Seal, have you been? Hello. I'm doing fine, thanks for asking. What are you doing out here so late? I thought your company closed a while ago. It is, but I'm just late out on a late school. What about you? Just taking out the trash. We're about to close out for the night. Cameron works for his family's restaurant whenever they need extra hands, but since they're usually busy, he almost always helping them out. Young Pizzeria is a highly recommended restaurant for tourists and locals alike, so their success is actually comparable to the Friends or Cafe. By the way, did you hear someone singing earlier? What? It's kind of noisy in the restaurant, so probably not. Was it you? No. No, I, we, I'm, I, you think I'm that much of like an egotistical jerk? Have you heard someone singing? Oh, yes, that was me. Aren't I wonderful? It was my song, though. <laughs> you mean Tori's song. Right, Tori's song. I was wondering... How's she doing, by the way? Do you know? From what I've heard, she seems better these days, and she's even reading more often. That's good. I heard that she had trouble seeing and walking, so I was worried. Yeah, it's an extremely rare disease that the doctors never witnessed before. But they're not exactly sure what caused it or how to cure it. Robin doesn't like talking about it, and I heard the guests, other than family, weren't allowed. I'm sorry. Sorry, but I hope you understand. It'd be overwhelming for her to see so many unexpected visitors. Yeah, before you came along, she was the most requested gondolier in town. I'm sure there are countless people who are eager to see her. In any case, I'll talk to Robin. You've known him for a while, so I'm sure we can let you visit. Really? I mean, I hope it's not too much trouble. You're fine. You have my thanks. I have to get back now, so I'll see you later. Cameron returns to the restaurant to finish cleaning up for the night. Cameron is such a worry boy, but he's a cool guy. Anyway, I better get back before Grandfather starts complaining again. Sirens. Ha! <laughs> what a joker. Cut up a time see a mermaid. Robin goes to the hospital to pay his mother a visit. With the intention of spending the night, he bought a chains of clothes and a toothbrush. Mother, you're still up late. Oh, it's late. Robin! I had a feeling you'd be stopping by, so I stayed up a little longer. Don't worry. You need to get some rest. Tori sets the book to the sun, gives Robin her undivided attention. How are you? How was your day? Mostly the same. We had a transfer student, though, so Mr. Norton made me show her around. Oh. Her? What's her name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Rhodes. Do you know her? The singer from Southford? That's exciting. Maybe you could be friends. 
with someone like me, and yeah, she'll find out what everyone thinks of me sooner or later. But you two have something in common. After all, I heard that you've been singing lately, Seal. The room turns quiet enough that one could faintly hear crickets chirping outside, but after a brief moment, Robin fixes his glasses. Really? How many times do I have to tell you, Mother? Just call me Robin. <laughs> my, my. Wait, I'm sorry. The nurses just can't stop talking about you. Wait, what, what? Who are we? I hope you didn't tell them about me. Don't worry. So we're Seal? Wasn't that, wasn't that guy we just saw Seal? That's not Seal? Is that, is that, we're the same person? We're the same person. Oh my god. I didn't say a word. Anyway, how are you feeling? Did Dr. Woodman say anything? Well... My condition worsened a little, but I'm still doing okay. I see. Well, hopefully everything works out. When I get better, we can go schooling together. I'm excited to see how much you've improved. Yeah, it's been so long since I've seen you with the oar. Brings back memories. Do you remember those fresh pretzels we used to eat by that dock? We used to go there almost every weekend. Interesting. Those were so good, especially when you dip them in warm cheese. Oh my god, those, oh my god, that's so good. And the smell of the butter would just lure people in. There's a family that sells them near the floating market. I'll bring some when I come back. It's okay, you don't have to. What? How come? I thought you liked them too. I love you. Aww, we'll go together next time, okay? Okay. It's past midnight. Robin spends the night in his mother's hospital room, resting over the couch. I don't know how much longer it'll take before I can pay off all these bills, but I'll keep working for her sake. And that mermaid. That was a mermaid, right? Robin tilts his head and gazes over the moon by the window. His eyes can't stay open for much longer, and he soon falls asleep. As Seal slowly opens his eyes, he finds himself immersed in the deep blue ocean. His fingers reach out toward the radiant sunlight that glimmers over the surface. Where am I? Wait, am I breathing underwater? Schools of fish wander past him, directing his gaze towards a massive chunk of stone. What is this? Trying to get a better look, Seal swims closer and places his hand over part of the ruins. It is covered with strange inscriptions, possibly in ancient language. Could it be? You see. Yes, you stand before Aquadine, the true city of Aquadine. Seal frantically looks around to see which direction the voice is coming from, but no one was there. Hmm. You are not to tell anyone what you witnessed this evening. What are you talking about? Fool. The young mermaid. Wait, did I really see a mermaid? And how does he know I saw her? Hmm. Who are you? Suddenly the ruins begin to shake and collapse as if an earthquake is occurring underwater. A large building breaks apart and tumbles towards them. Seal desperately tries to swim away, but he can't escape. His cries are muted by the crashing stone's impact. Robin wakes up in the middle of the night, panting heavily. He notices his mother still sound asleep before breathing a sigh of relief. It's just a dream. Just a dream. It's another early morning for Robin as he's, he is the first to arrive in the vacant classroom, which means the perfect time for a nap. <sighs> Living two lives sure takes the toll. Sometimes I wish I could just sleep all day. What's up? Hey, Four Eyes, what's up? So much for my nap. Maybe if I pretend I'm asleep, she'll stop bothering me. Tell me how it went. Why is she always so persistent? Just leave me alone! Hey! Come on, get up, I know you're awake. What do you want, Diana? <laughs> I went on your tour, went with Elizabeth. Did you learn anything about her? Nothing happened. Really? Then again, I guess it's not too surprising to come out of you. Poor guy. Elizabeth is out of his league after all, but I'll cheer him up. What do you think? Wanna grab some coffee after school? My treat? No. We can go to Friends or Cafe. You know you can't resist the best coffee in town. I know you're really bogged down right now, but your day out can really do you wonders. Come on, smell that coffee. Hmm. What are you talking about? Hey, folks. Morning, fellas. What's going on? Mr. Norton sees Robin's face buried in his arms. What's going on? What happened to him? Well... It didn't work out. But there are plenty of other fish in the sea. You tried your luck, Romeo? I didn't get my first golf until I was 28, but man, she was a looker. What? I'm just tired, damn it! A few more students under the room as the bell sounds and Robin is visibly upset. 
taxes. City Hall eventually comes after another class period. With nothing better to do, Robin walks into the library with a grumpy mood. Hmm. Good. Barely anyone is here can finally take a nap. Robin's tired body crumbles over an empty table. As he tries to sleep, he's reminded of the events that occurred the night before. I never thought mermaids actually existed. I always thought it was a myth. After seeing one in person, I'm convinced that they're real. In that dream. Whose voice was that and why did I see ancient aquedyne? I have so many questions yet no answers. Abandoning his plans to sleep through the period, Robin follows his curiosity and decides to look around the bookshelves. The school library actually has more books on merfolk mythology than most libraries in the world. Our school's founder was not only a wealthy man, but a firm believer of ancient aquedyne as well. He collected all sorts of related books in hopes to educate or convert the students. The only issue is deciphering whether a document is reliable or not, especially without any physical evidence. Even though that's been a problem for centuries, there's still a handful of believers that support the Merfolk existence. Robin walks past a few shelves until one book titled Mythology of the Merfolk Civilization catches his eye. He reads a few pages. Hmm. That seems like it'll be worth a read. I guess I'll just check it out. As he walks over to the front desk, Robin trips over his shoelace and loses balance. Whoa! A girl with straight black hair who is sitting at a nearby table sees the book over the marble floor and picks it up. Wow. Here. As Anya returns it to Robin, she notices that it's a book about merfolk and is taken back. I'm sorry. Thanks. Hmm? Merfolk? Yeah, I just feel like reading up on Aquadine's history. But it's still debatable whether they actually existed or not. I see. Without wasting another word, Anya flips her hair and walks away. Have I met her before? Maybe she's in my class. Later that evening, Seal guides his customer across the canal, lit with street lamps on both sides. Through the light's reflection, he scolds gently enough so that one could easily... Sorry, could just barely hear the sound of his horn. It was almost as if the gondola was floating through the indigo sky, surrounded by a swarm of dancing fireflies. Once they finally reach the cloud company, Seal lets his customer off at the dock and bows to her after the tour. Thank you! Thank you so much for choosing Cloud Company. Have a good night. <laughs> that was fun. I'll see you again sometime. After waving goodbye to her, he looks toward the shore's direction, curious whether the mermaid will show up again. Grandpa will speak. <laughs> yes, you will. Robin, time to fix dinner. Grandpa is very hungry. I'll be out for a little longer, Grandfather. Oh, stop calling me Robin one on uniform. You'll blow my cover. Oh, yeah? You want your grandpa to starve? No! Then come inside! Just give me an hour. I want to spend some time alone. <sighs> Take this lantern and don't be out too late. Thank you, Grandfather. I won't be long. Did you find out who was singing that night? Don't worry. Uh, oh. I didn't. But I still want to look around some more. Fine. Just watch out for sirens. <laughs> you worry too much, Grandfather. I came back last time. I'll be fine. That is what they all say before they disappear. Forever. That's true. The lantern attached to the pharaoh, Seal cautiously glides toward the mystical shore. Once again, he sees the ghost-like jellyfish wandering in the sky. And these jellyfish are here again, but I don't see the mermaid. She wasn't singing tonight, so maybe she's in here. After seeing me, I wouldn't be surprised if she never came up again. She seemed afraid of me. But how did she know Mother's song? I'm sure I've never met her until that night. A sudden splash catches Seal off guard. He immediately looks in that direction, but it's still too dark to see. What? What was that? With his unoccupied hand, Seal swings his rope around the closest tree branch and ties it. After setting foot on the rocks, he grabs the lantern and walks around the shore. Are you afraid of me? It's okay, you can trust me. Seal points his lantern wherever he could, but he doesn't see anyone nor get a response. And it was probably a fish or something. As he turns away, Seal spots someone from the corner of his view. His eyes widen once more. A blue-haired mermaid emerges from the water, unmistakably the same mermaid from before. She's not swimming away this time. Oh, that's a safe zone. Oh, that doesn't do it either. Nervous and scared, she stares back at him with her aquamarine eyes. Her arms act as an invisible wall, a sign that she's on her guard. No, she's definitely still scared. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe she's a little curious about me too. About humans. Could it be? 
Are you the mermaid who sang yesterday? She remains silent but nods cautiously. She understands me. Well, maybe she could speak too. What is your name? The mermaid doesn't respond. However, she seems to be more careful about keeping her distance. I saw Splash. You don't want her to say her name. There has to be something I can do to prove I'm harmless. I really want to learn more about her. To her surprise, Seal offers her his hand as a sign of peace. She examines his extended hand and his smile. The mermaid raises her hand ever so slightly, almost tempted to trust him. However, she pulls back at the last second and immediately swims away in fear. <sighs> Darn, it, so close. That didn't turn out too well, but maybe we'll meet again one day. As the night sky falls darker, the moonlight glistens over the river and Seal skulls away. Are mermaids real? Well, yes, they are, obviously, because that's the name of the game. Aquadine. It's deal with the water and the ocean, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm really excited for this game. I can't wait for it to come out. And if you want to play more, you'll just have to play the rest of the demo, because I did not playing through the entire thing. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this quick look of Aquadine. Uh, links in the description below to follow the developer and all that fun jazz. And I hope you all have a good day and take care. And if you like the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more quick looks. Take care, everybody.